I, you know, I'm trying to feel like, how, I, how am I feeling right now? I'm feeling so joyful. And oh. I seriously, one of the, you know, I was thinking, okay, what comes to my mind? I try to feel how I'm feeling when I'm about to introduce whoever our guest is today. And I, that's the word that comes to my mind, joyful. She, she's a best-selling author, a performer, uh, a producer, a promoter, and a talk show host. We're going to get right into it with Vicki Abelson. <laughs> Hi, David. What a lovely introduction. Oh, I well, think I was talking through half of it. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, it was it. It adds to the sound, the sound effects of your voice. Oh God! Oh yes, because they're so malo. What is it? Malo uh, mellifluous? What's that word? <laughs> Not maleficent. Ma no, no. Mellifluous. <laughs> no, no. I'm that. Like and now I hear my phone that I took off the hook going. Nah, 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 nah. It'll stop in a minute, but I don't want it to bother. It's yeah, annoying sounds. <laughs> Listen, mine talks to me too, and even when it's not on. <laughs> so, I know. I know you, how that goes. You do all these things. And I, I have to say the first time, uh, first time I met you, I believe is when I came to your house with Roz. That's correct. That is correct. That was wonderful. Ah, uh, it was such a joy. And to see you in action of how you interview people and you just like, you know, take them in like you're, you know, you're your best friends. And then, and then your women who write. It's like amazing. What out of all the stuff you do, I mean, we listed at the beginning, do you have a favorite thing? You know, David, that's, that's a really good and difficult question because I love everything that I do. And I could, I, that wasn't always true. Yeah. Um, but well, it's been true for a long time. And and actually, it's been true forever because whatever I'm doing, I acclimate to and I find the joy. I love your cup and it matches almost my shirt. I um, thought that too. <laughs> I, I love that cup. And you know, I used to have a cup like that, that one of the women who I gave me and it broke and I have never been able to replace it. So you have to tell me where you got it. I, I got it. this from Performing Arts Studio West. When we had one of our shows, we had all these cups and they were selling cups and they had a red one this one and then they also have a white one with red heart so I, I just bought those two cups I love them I love it um so anyway you know what I do women who write which by the way I am in mourning because uh I have not been able to do it in my living room since the pandemic obviously for those of you who don't know you know 50 60 women in my living room and a few good men and um, it, 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 we put on a show in my living room and everybody is packed tight like sardines, chair after chair after chair. And we eat lunch together and mm. we schmooze afterwards. And it's the most fantastic thing. It's the culmination of everything I do because I write for it. I produce, I perform, I, I book it. Um, I do the publicity. So it's kind of, as I said, the culmination of everything that I do and the last few years, we've been able to take it live on Facebook. So we've had this huge audience, live audience, in addition to the people in the living room, which was enormous, which I'm gonna get to my beep about that. But um, anyway, so I love that. But then I have Game Changers, which is my one-on-one -on -one with people. And that is where I really take a back seat to the other, and it's all about finding out about the other person. And it's a conversation. So it, I never prepare questions in advance. It's completely on the fly. It's the way I would talk to anybody that I met that, um, and many of them, many of the people I interview, I'm blessed that they're friends of mine now. So I do know them somewhat, right? But the first time I interviewed Rosie, I did not know her. What I did not know her. Um, Anson Williams instigated and said, you two would be great friends. And he was right, you know, she's perfect, wonderful. But um, sometimes, you know, I, I have a natural curiosity about people. Mm. And so I ask the questions that I want to know the answers to. So I'm not asking all that boring stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm asking what I want to know. And so as a result, the conversations are usually pretty provocative and stimulating and fun and warm. And, you know, all of those things that we have when we're talking to somebody that we admire and we like and we want to know better 
And so I love doing that. If I, and then I'm a writer and, um, you mean, know, I book, yeah, your book, I mean, uh, don't jump sex, drugs, and rock and roll, dot, 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 and my fucking mother. That's my book. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Carl Reiner's company published it. I was the only non-family member that he published. And I got to do the audio book. Today is Mel Brooks' birthday. And I got to do the uh, audio book in Carl Reiner's pool house while he and Mel were sitting watching TV and eating dinner. So occasionally I would get to walk through the house and see them and chat with them a little. Hi, Mel. Hi, Carl. I mean, it was a, a riot. And, uh, but anyway, so uh, I love writing and I mostly now do my writing on Facebook. And, um, that, and I have a screenplay that's unfinished. I have things to get that I need to get to, but I love writing and I, I love all of these things. So I love interviewing and, um, and then I love hosting and welcoming and putting on shows. I've been, I've been a rock, I was a rock and roll promoter in the eighties. So I've been doing that for years. So all of it just, I, yeah, I, I'm very blessed. What, I mean, we have over a hundred students watching from Performing Arts Studio West. We have the biz and then YouTube land. Right. So somebody who, who has the itch to, to pick up that pen uh, that magic wand, as Janet Gallen would say, and and just start writing or or create their own show or what something like you do. How would you? What, what's that first step? You know, that's a great question, David. Especially in the pandemic, because for two things. First of all, the secret to writing is writing. I learned that when I took writers boot camp, and they said we will get you to write a whole screenplay in six weeks you come in with a premise line and you're just gonna to have to write a lot of hours a day. Uh, and I started doing that many, many years ago, 24 years ago. But then I started doing morning pages, which um, is uh, the artist's way, Julia Cameron. And I don't do it perfectly. I don't do it as she suggests. I, I write a minimum of five minutes a day, every single day. And I've been doing that for over 7,000 days. Wow. And the thing that keeps me writing is that I force myself to check in with someone every single day. I send an email. I did my writing today and I tell her how long I've written. Some days it's five minutes. Some days it's 20. Some days it's three hours. Some day, you know, it, as long as I honor my five minutes, it keeps me writing. And if I keep writing, I never, I never run into a wall. I never get blocked because I'm used. And all it is, is it's stream of consciousness. It's whatever comes into my brain. You know, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. I often do my morning pages at 1 a.m. the night, the next night, you know. But today I did my morning pages right. and uh, in the morning. And it serves me better when I do it that way. Yeah. And, um, and then uh, as far as uh, how do you start your own thing, Women Who Write was... Uh, a product, I, I wanted to showcase my book into a play. And I didn't know how to get stage time. I had just moved from New York to LA. Even if I would have gotten five minutes here or five minutes there. Yeah. My book was 325 pages, you know, whatever, how many, however many pages. So my editor suggested that I start something for the local mommies. And I read a few pages from my book each month and then invite other people to read with me. And I was blessed that I knew a few celebrities. So I started inviting them to read with me. And then after just a few months, um, Carol Liefer asked me if she could bring her friend, Marley Matlin. And Marley Matlin is an Academy Award winning actress who signs, who is deaf and has an interpreter. And she came uh, and from that month on, every month I had superstars, every single month. And then Lori Lieberman, who wrote the lyrics to Killing Me Softly, which was, has sold literally, I think, tri a tri like more, like billions of copies. She wrote the lyric that inspired it. She asked me if she could come. And she said, can I just come and read poetry? And I said, no, you have to come sing. Yeah. And so once she came and sang, I started having music every month. So from nothing, I created what became 12 and a half years ago, one of the most successful literary salons in the world that 
it's not successful. I'm not making the kind of money that you guys are making acting out there in the world. But um, it's successful in that most writers uh, know about it. And um, I really am able to get, you know, I've had Carl Reiner and, 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 uh, and, and uh, um, Norman Lear and Gary Marshall and Cloris Leachman and crazy people come, these names don't mean anything to your young students. I'm trying to think of who they, might- They Sussman. should. Josh, Josh Sussman, he, he's, uh, he's on Nickelodeon. Yeah, Josh, Josh okay. came to, uh, he did a class to meet the biz. So Josh Sussman has done my thing. You know, I've had a lot of uh, varied and wonderful performers, Rozzy for one. Right. And, um, but in any case, the other thing that I also started from nothing was when the pandemic started, I, I live alone now. My son had just, I had just empty nested. My son had just moved out at 26 and I was living alone in this house. It once housed my, my husband, my two kids, and then my, my husband and I split up and then my daughter went away to college and my son moved out and now it's just me and I'm alone and I can't go anywhere. It's lockdown. So I started going live. And at first it was just on a, on a whim I started shooting the shit with Vicky and it was just basically to keep myself. So it forced me to put on makeup and do my hair and get dressed. Yeah. And then I did it seven days a week for months and months and months. And I started having these regulars call, we called ourselves the COVID crazies. Well, you were like therapy for so many people. Well, it, we were each other's company yeah. and, um, it gave us purpose. We spent July 4th together. We spent Thanksgiving together. We spent Christmas. We did all the holidays together. Um, Memorial Day that we, we'd have barbecues on Zoom and, and um, it just kept us all from going crazy. And so as things opened up, I went from seven days a week to then five days a week. And I did that for a very long time. I wasn't making any money. It was just to be of service. It was important. Then uh, soon after I was able to start doing interviews again on Zoom, because I used to do my interview show at my home or at the celebrity's home, started doing those on Zoom. So I went from seven to five to three. I'm now down to two shows a week because now everybody's back to living. They don't need me. They don't right? need to shoot this shit. <laughs> they don't need to do that every day. They want to do it in person now. That's right. That's exactly right. So, um, and I'm having lunch with one of the women that was at every single one of my women who write for about 10 years, she was at every one and we're having lunch. I haven't seen her in a year and a half. It's thrilling. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, I, I saw your list. I looked at this list of yours that went on and on and on of all the people that you, you've had either interviewed on your show or at the, at the, 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 the book reading um, at your house. When I say, oh, what, what was the exact thing that I wrote here? When I said, um, okay, when I say Vicki Abelson's Women Who Write, what is the first name or face that comes to your mind? You know, uh... I'm gonna get sentimental now, but I think of Carl Reiner because for those of you who don't know, Carl Reiner created a television show called Dick Van Dyke, which was a game changer in, in, tel in live television. Dick Van Dyke was a star. Some of you kids might know him from Mary Poppins. He's the original chimney sweep. And um, anyway, Carl, Carl uh, was, my, was my hugest, was my first huge get. It was the first time I felt like I could charge money for people. It used to be that it cost me money to have my salon. I would have 50 people and I would give them swag each month. Thanks to Rick Smokey of Quick Impressions. He would send me pads and, and calendars and things to give away. Um, my kids and my husband and I would go get chairs from the local church to, to have enough chairs in the house. And I, you know, I would serve things and it was costing me money. And when, with Carl, yeah. it was such an enormous thing. It was, Carl then started doing a lot of publicity after it, but his first book, his me first memoir wasn't even finished. And he came with pieces of paper and gave out to everyone pages from his book. Right. And he read to us and it was the only show I've ever done that didn't open with music and there was no one else on the bill. He wanted to do it alone. 
And he talked for over two hours with us and um, two screaming standing ovations. And for everyone of our generation, it was a thrill beyond. Uh, Carl Reiner also, though some of you kids might know Steve Martin and he wrote and directed a bunch of Steve Martin movies and The Jerk for one. And yeah. Carl did amazing things in his life and is an amazing man. And so getting, my father had passed away um, before Carl came. And the morning that Carl was coming, I heard an owl out my window and I knew it was my father. I knew it was the thing that would have made my father so proud yeah. um, that this was happening. And um, Carl then went on to write in his 90s, about seven books at least. Right, but this right. was the first of them. And um, he just passed away last year um, yeah. at I think 99 or something. Yeah. Um, but um, that was a get, and, and then getting Mickey Dolan's of the Monkees. I was, oh. a, my, for those of you who don't know, okay, he had, they had a song in Shrek. What's the one that they had in Shrek? Um, I'm a believer. Was that the one in Shrek? I think so. Maybe. So that's Mickey Dolan's song. So that guy who, you know, they were a band when I was a little girl, young girl that we would scream. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> they had a TV show and they had albums and they were adorable. And uh, so getting Mickey in, in my living room was pretty exciting. Oh my gosh. That's, you know, and I see these names and again, I've been to, to to your living room a couple of times, and I was I was one of the questions I was going to ask. And of course, we still don't know yet. But I was going, when do, when are you going to do it again? <laughs> because it it's such a loving feeling. You could come in there, and the door opens, and the the excitement, and not just excitement. It's this love, and just no no bullshit, no just just being friends, hanging out kind of feel. You know, that's why, David, uh, I started it with everybody bringing food. It's a potluck. So I don't cater it and charge for that. I have everybody bring something because what that does is that makes everyone in the room a contributor to all of our good time. Everybody is contributing something, yeah. whether it be their talent or their food or whatever. So and then we eat first. And when you eat with someone and you get food stuck in your teeth or you get your lipstick smeared or something you fun. You break bread. You <laughs> break bread. It, may, it, it, it creates an intimacy and a closeness and a, a sense of fun uh, that you don't get if, you know, when you go to a movie and everybody's just sitting and it's harder to network. But when everybody's eating and standing at the table and getting food, people talk more and get to know each other. Yeah. And it's an opportunity to welcome new people. And so... Um, the vibe is there, there's no pretension. We talk back, the entertainer sings, we sing along. We sang along with Bob Calsill. That particular video, Ed, he was opening for Ed Asner. Uh, and as a matter of fact, um, uh, James Morrison from 24, who's a huge actor celebrity in his own right, he opened the show. Then Bob Calsill, which was another band when I was a little girl that, oh my God, they were my gods. The Cow Sills. I, and, I have an album. Still. Yeah, yeah. The Rain in the Park and other things. I mean, they were fast. So Bob did this set, which now has over 120,000 hits on YouTube, which is my biggest uh, success on YouTube. But, um, you know, just crazy things. So the fact that you get to sit amongst your heroes. And then Ed, Ed Asner, for those of you who have ever seen Elf, he's Santa. Santa was in my house. And um, so you got to, I got to sit on Santa's lap and take a picture and everybody takes a picture with everybody. And, you know, it's just this intimate, lovely, warm, fun. We sang, we sing along with everybody. So it's really lovely. Well, you know, it's, and it's interesting how you, how it, it, it's morphed into this moment because right now I'm going to bring on some of our family here. Not and and we're gonna just hang out and and have a, a a loving meet the biz kind of kind of visit with you i love that mm -hmm. 